Does the name quadratic equation sound scary? Don't panic. They're not as terrifying as they seem. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve any quadratic equation using two simple methods, factoring and the quadratic formula. By the end, you'll see that quadratics are more like friendly puzzles than math monsters. A quadratic equation is just a fancy name for any equation that includes an x squared term. The general form looks like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Here, x squared is what makes it quadratic. If there's no x squared, it's not a quadratic equation. a, b, and c are just numbers, aka constants. They can be positive, negative, or even zero. Here are some examples of quadratic equations. Look, each one contains an x squared term. Now that we know what a quadratic equation is, let's explore how to solve them, because that's the fun part. When we solve a quadratic equation, we're basically looking for the values of x that make the equation true, meaning when we plug them in, we get zero on both sides. These values are called solutions or roots of the equation. Let's see an example. x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. What values of x make this equation true? Let's check some random numbers. If x equals 1, then 1 squared plus 5 times 1 plus 6 equals 1 plus 5 plus 6, which is 12. Oops, we need 0, not 12 so 1 is not a solution. Let's try another number, negative 2. If x equals negative 2, negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2, plus 6, 4 minus 10 plus 6, which is 0, boom! It's 0, so negative 2 is a solution. Most of the time, quadratic equations have two solutions, but we can't just keep guessing numbers until we get lucky. That would take forever. Instead of trial and error, we use two foolproof methods. Factoring, quick and easy, but effective only when it works. The quadratic formula works every time, even for the trickiest equations. Let's break them down, starting with factoring. This method works well for simpler quadratic equations, but it does take a bit of practice to get the hang of it. The idea is to find two numbers, let's call them P and Q, that satisfy these conditions. They add up to the middle coefficient. They multiply to give the product of the first and last coefficients. Once we find these numbers P and Q, we can rewrite the given equation, then break it into factors to solve for X easily. Let's see factoring in action. We're solving x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. First, let's identify the coefficients. I'll rewrite the equation to make it easier to understand. Can you spot a, b, and c? a is the coefficient of x squared. Here, it's 1. b is the coefficient of x. Here, it's 5. c is the constant. Here, it's 6. Now we need to find two numbers, P and Q, that add up to B and multiply to A times C. So P plus Q should be 5, and P times Q should be 6. Let's check the factors of 6 to find which pair adds up to 5. 1 times 6 equals 6, but 1 plus 6 is 7, not 5, so this pair doesn't work. Next, 2 times 3 also equals 6. Checking the sum? 2 plus 3 is 5. Got it. So, the numbers are 2 and 3. With practice, you'll spot them quickly. Now let's rewrite the equation using P and Q. Since 5x can be written as 2x plus 3x, we rewrite the equation as x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6 equals 0. Next, we group the terms and factor out the common terms. Since x plus 2 is a common factor, we factor it out. Finally, we get x plus 2 times x plus 3 equals to 0. And that's our factored equation. We are not finished yet. Since the product of two factors is 0, 
at least one of them must be zero. So, we set each factor equal to zero. If x plus 2 equals 0, then x equals negative 2, or if x plus 3 equals 0, then x equals negative 3. x equals negative 2, or x equals negative 3. These are the solutions to the quadratic equation. If needed, we can verify our answers by substituting the calculated roots into the original equation. Since both values results the 0, our solutions x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3 are correct. Now, let's try another problem. Solve 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 equals 0 by factoring. We can see that a is 2, b is 7, and c is 3. We need to find two numbers p and q, that, add up to 7 and multiply to 6. Let's check the factors of 6. 1 times 6 equal to 6, and 1 plus 6 is 7. We got it on the first try. p and q are 1 and 6. Now, rewrite the given equation by replacing b with p and q. 2x squared plus x plus 6x plus 3 is 0. Now group the terms and factor out common factors. We can see the 2x plus 1 is the common factor. We have fully factored the given equation. 2x plus 1 times x plus 3 is equal to the 0. Finally, let's solve for x. Since the product of two terms is 0, at least one of them must be 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. Solving for x, if 2x plus 1 equals 0, then x should be minus 1 half. If x plus 3 equals 0, then x equals minus 3. These are the roots of given quadratic equation. x should be minus 1 half or minus 3. If needed, we can verify our answers by substituting the calculated roots into the given equation. Plugging x equals negative one-half into the original equation, we get zero. Plugging x equals negative three also results in zero. Both solutions work perfectly. This confirms that these are the correct roots. Now. Let's try another problem. Solve x squared minus 36 equals 0 by factoring. Here, a equals 1, and we notice there is no middle term so that b equals 0. The constant c equals negative 36. If you're familiar with the difference of squares, you can factor this quickly, but let's go through the traditional method step by step. To solve this equation, we need to find two numbers, p and q, that add up to 0 and multiply to negative 36. Let's go through the factors of negative 36 one by one. 1 times negative 36, but 1 plus negative 36 is not 0. 2 times negative 18, but 2 plus negative 18 is not 0. 3 times negative 12, but 3 plus negative 12 is not 0. 4 times negative 9, but 4 plus negative 9 is not 0. 6 times negative 6, and 6 plus negative 6 is 0. Yes, it works. Since 6 and negative 6 meet both conditions, these are our values for p and q. Now rewrite the equation. Replace the b from p and q x squared plus 6x minus 6x minus 36 is 0. Group the terms and factor out common factors. We can see the x plus 6 is the common factor. We have fully factored the given equation. x plus 6 times x minus 6 is 0. Finally, let's solve for x. Since the product of two terms is 0, at least one of them must be 0. x plus 6 is 0 or x minus 6 is 0. If x plus 6 equals 0, then x equals negative 6. If x minus 6 equals 0, then x equals 6. 
these are the roots of given quadratic equation. X should be minus 6 or 6. If you need, you can verify those number as earlier. Now, let's try another problem. Solve 9x squared plus 24x plus 16 equals 0 by factoring. Here, a is 9, b is 24, and the constant c is 16. To factor this equation, we need to find two numbers, p and q. That, add up to 24 and multiply to 144. Now let's check the factors of 144 one by one. 1 times 144, but the sum is not 24. 2 times 72, but 2 plus 72 is not 24. 3 times 48, but 3 plus 48 is not 24. 4 times 36, but 4 plus 36 is not 24. 6 times 24, but 6 plus 24 is not 24. 8 times 18, but 8 plus 18 is not 24. 9 times 16, but 9 plus 16 is not 24. 12 times 12, and 12 plus 12 is 24. Yes, this works. So P and Q are both 12. Now, rewrite the equation by replacing B with P and Q. 9x squared plus 12x plus 12x plus 16 is 0. Next, group the terms and factor out common factors. We can see that 3x plus 4 is the common factor. This simplifies to square of 3x plus 4 is 0. Now, let's solve for x. Since the square of 3x plus 4 is 0, we set 3x plus 4 is 0. Solving for x, we get x equals negative 4 thirds. This equation has only one solution, because it's a perfect square trinomial, meaning both factors were the same. Instead of two different solutions, we get a repeated solution. Now you're familiar with solving quadratic equations by factoring. While this method is great when P and Q are easy to find, some equations are trickier. For a universal method that works every time, let's explore the quadratic formula. Instead of hunting for the right numbers, we use a formula that directly gives us the solutions to any quadratic equation. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. It might look a bit complicated at first, but once you get the hang of it, Solving quadratics becomes super easy. Let's solve a previous problem using the quadratic formula. As before, the first step is to identify a, b, and c. This is crucial. a is 1, b is 5, c is 6. Now, substitute these values into the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. Let's substitute. We can simplify this more. 25 minus 24 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1, which left us negative 5 plus or minus 1 divide by 2. Now here we have two solutions, negative 5 plus 1 divide by 2 and negative 5 minus 1 divide by 2. We can solve these and here are our roots, negative 2 and negative 3. And there you have it. We got the same solutions as before, without guessing. Pretty cool, right? Let's try this method on another problem. 9x squared plus 24x plus 16 is 0. Same as earlier, we have to identify the a, b, and c. This is really crucial. a is 9, b is 24, and c is 16. We'll use the quadratic formula again. Now you'll have to substitute these values into the formula. 576 minus 576 is 0. The square root term is gone now. Finally, we have x is negative 24 over 18, which is negative 4 over 3.
This confirms our earlier solution without any guessing or factoring. Let's try another problem. 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 is 0. Same as earlier, we have to identify the a, b, and c. This is really crucial. a is 2, b is 3, c is negative 2. We'll use the quadratic formula again. Now you have to substitute these values into the formula. Square root of 25 is 5. Now we have x is negative 3 plus or minus 5 divided by 4. So there are two solutions. x is negative 3 plus 5 divided by 4. Or x is negative 3 minus 5 divided by 4. By solving, we get x is 1 half or negative 2. And there we have it. Two solutions without needing to factor. With that, our lesson comes to an end. If you think my contents are valuable to the world, you are welcome to join my Patreon community. Like and subscribe to Professor Mad for more interesting videos.